We're Dennis and Liz, full-time RVers and digital nomads exploring North America and our renovated Class C RV, Maggie. After spending the past two months RVing Michigan, we make our way to the neighboring state of Wisconsin, where Liz's mom joins us to explore some of the hidden gems and beautiful coastlines of the state. Our first stop was to pick up my mom from the Duluth Airport, a 40-minute drive from our first destination, Patterson State Park, which is home to Big Manitou Falls, the tallest waterfall in Wisconsin. After enjoying the waterfalls, we continued on to the Bayfield Peninsula, commonly dubbed the Fruit Loop, because the region's climate is perfect for growing a variety of fruit. We stopped at one of the many you pick farms in the area, helping ourselves to fresh blueberries just before season's end. This is definitely a fun activity to do if you're heading into the Apostle Islands area. The you pick season here is kind of short, obviously with weather conditions that can change what's available at what time. So earlier in the summer, raspberries or gooseberries are available. Later in the season is blueberries and next up is going to be apples. So no matter when you're coming, there's probably some type of fruit being grown here. Hopefully we come back to Bayfield in three hours though. <laughs> Apostle Islands Cruises and the National Park Service welcome you all to the Apostle Islands. Thank you for joining us tonight on the Grand Tour Evening Edition. About 50 miles long tonight, about two and a half hours. All right, I hope everybody has a great time. It should be, uh, should be excellent weather. There are 23 islands nestled around the Bayfield Peninsula of Wisconsin in the cold waters of Lake Superior, of which only 22 are included in the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore. Madeline Island, which is the largest island of the archipelago, is the only island not included and remains largely in private hands, dotted with summer home retreats and a popular vacation destination. The Ojibwe people who lived here for over 800 years were forced to cede much of the land they called home in the Treaty of 1854. The tribe was relocated into mainland Wisconsin onto a small reservation cut off from their sacred lands, including Madeline Island, which was used for ceremonies and trade and considered the hub of life for the ancestral Ojibwe. Today, the Red Cliff Band of Lake Superior Chippewa Reservation is home to Frog Bay, the first tribal national park and well worth exploring. Like much of the landscape around Lake Superior, the Apostle Islands were formed during the last ice age, when glaciers compacted layers of gravel, sand, and clay, creating sandstone. During the 1800s, many of the islands were quarried for sandstone to be used as the primary building material at the time. When steel, concrete, and glass became easier and more economical to produce, the quarries were abandoned but if you look close enough, their remnants can still be seen today. Now I'm gonna be slowing down here and we're gonna just kinda of idle up the shoreline. 
And this is kind of a eagle hotspot as well. So we'll keep our eyes up in the white pines and the red pines. That's usually where we see them. Lake Superior's harsh waters continue to carve into the sandstone, creating sea caves that can be explored by kayak or boat. On the grand tour, we were able to view Devil and Raspberry Island's lighthouses two of the six lighthouses built around the Apostle Islands. Those who want a more intimate experience can request a guided lighthouse tour or apply for a backcountry camping permit to stay overnight on one of the islands. Unfortunately, we were unable to do either this time, but we're excited to explore more on our next visit. Another A-plus experience. It was really relaxing. It's a totally different vibe than how we've explored some of the other Great Lakes. Normally we get up close and personal kayak or do like an adventure experience and this was super calm and just beautiful views of the islands and getting to see the sea caves on Devil's Island was so cool. Definitely recommend this experience if you're coming here. The three hours flew by but still felt like you were getting to see so much of the island. Our captain Ross did such a good job giving like little history tidbits which we thought was really awesome. He's so good at spotting na nature. He found an owl and all these eagles. It was just overall a really great experience and I'm glad it kind of gave us a good lay of the land for what there is to do in Apostles. But tips is make sure to bring layers because it does get very windy and chilly if you take the afternoon tour. And we saw lots of people with coolers, so they brought their own drinks or snacks in case you get hungry and get here early because the line was long so that you can get a good spot on the boat. We don't feel like cooking, <laughs> so we're going to grab some dinner in town of Bayfield. But on Tuesday, something that's really fun in the summertime is that they do music in the park. It's totally free. They have a gazebo that there's different artists playing each week and you can bring your own food, everyone had beer and wine. It was like a really fun way to spend the afternoon if you're in the area. We are about to have a feast enjoying the gorgeous view at our campground. We are at the Dare Rimple campground, I hope I'm saying that right. It's run by the city here in Bayfield it is a first come first serve campground about a 15 minute walk from downtown Bayfield and there are so many sites that overlook Lake Superior I mean right in front of it with just epic views of the Apostle Islands our first night we weren't able to snag a spot uh, that was waterfront but we moved the next day and got a Mac Daddy spot but if you're coming here, it is important to know that every single site is extremely unlevel. There is electricity, but there's only water, spigots, and select spots throughout the campground, and there's no dump on site. So it's a bit primitive, not the most convenient, but it pays for it with these views. I think today we're gonna just chill around the campground. We're just gonna enjoy this beautiful spot we have, play games, enjoy each other's company, and we're starting today off right with a huge feast. We have salad. We always like to start our morning with salad. We got fresh pasture-raised pork bacon, a delicious omelet, and the fresh blueberries we picked the other day. But seriously, this view. Oh, there's also eagles nesting in a tree nearby, which is so cool. We've seen at least two of the eagles fly by. It was a great spot. By the way, moms and I are twins today. Oh, except I got a bunch of food on mine today. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're twins. <laughs> she has our ETRV. Limited edition Mexico merch, it's no longer for sale, but mom's got hooked up. <laughs> Game on. Dennis does not like Scrabble. So I'm really excited to have my mom here to play with me. It's one of my favorite games. We worked up quite the appetite playing Scrabble. As far as it's one to one, we're gonna have to have a tiebreaker round. We're taking a little break having a charcuterie board. 
I guess it's just a cheese board because there's no meat on it, but we do have a homemade smoked fish dip. It's delicious. We had a very fun day relaxing, playing games, and just hanging out at the campsite. But before we get ready for bed for this evening, I wanted to show you where Mom's is sleeping. I think she's been comfortable in her bed. We turned the couch into her bed area, and we're just glad that we have this RV, that the layout really, really works for our guest. No stop to a national lakeshore or park is complete without visiting the visitor center. There you can find stamps for your national park's passport book. We love collecting stamps showing when we visited a place. It's just nice to be able to look back at those memories. Remember all of the cool places that we've gone, but today mom gets to help us stamp. We're gonna head out of the town of Bayfield and we're going to the other side of the park, which is closer to Cornucopia. They have more trails, beach systems, and of course, more beautiful sea caves and apostle islands to explore. This is a hot hike. We are here in middle of August, and I'll tell you what, there's like no breeze in the first half of this trip, and it is a hot, humid summer day. It's funny because you'll start to see the leaves changing in some of the spots, and it kind of tricks your mind into thinking it should be cooler than it is. But right now, fall still feels a long way off. We finally made it to the cliff side. The first stop is the crevasse, which is a huge sea cave that goes super far back. If you're exploring this national lakeshore by kayak, which is highly recommended, we didn't do it this trip. My mom wasn't super into that, so we opted for the boat tour instead. But if you do kayak or are interested in getting up close and personal with these sea caves and these formations, you can definitely kayak the lakeshore here and go all the way back in the sea caves. There's a group down there right now and it looks awesome. Just below the cliff's edge, it's a very long drop, is the bowl. It's a huge section where it just kind of created this like wash from all of the intense waves that come through in Lake Superior storms. And the really cool thing about this park is it's not just beautiful in the summertime to explore, but this is also a park you want to explore in the wintertime. Lake Superior completely freezes over in the winter, so much that getting to Madeline Island and back, you can drive your car over the ice, and the ice caves will start to get like icicles forming from the ceiling. It's super cool. This is definitely a place to come back to in the winter. I feel like it would be a completely different experience, but it's breathtaking. What do you do after a really hot hike? you jump in the lake. <laughs> We're back where it all started. Yes. I'm sad to be leaving. <laughs> had a great time. I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah. Love you. Oh. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Laundromat? Yeah. We have some uh, house chores we need to take care of now that our guest is gone. We'll miss you, Mom. We loved having you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh. <laughs> Rolling. Well, Wisconsin. 
It is a warm summer day and the mosquitoes are out in full force, so we're gonna call it here. We finished our laundry. We made it to our destination for just one night. It's a harvest host. We get to stay at a brewery. It's going to be a warm night though. I will tell you, it is very hot right now. And since we're at a harvest host and dry camping, well, there's no AC. So. so we hope you enjoyed exploring Apostle Islands with us. We know there is so much more to see. We'd love to hear suggestions for others if they're coming to this area in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We put content like this out each week and we have many more explorations coming. We'll see you next week. Oh my god, the mosquitoes are so bad. Tonight's gonna be a very real awakening to what we have been not doing lately, which is dry camping. <laughs> that one spot we dry camped in, it was actually really nice weather. But this is hot, steamy, and buggy. <laughs> Whoa. 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 I could see them swarming your head. <laughs>